Hey family, welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So today's question of the day is what challenges does social media bring into your relationship? Stay tuned. All right, family, so welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So again, I have eight tips for you to understand what challenges um, social media brings to your relationship. So the very first one is we are wanting to post and put things on social media because we are seeing other people doing it versus understanding and appreciating what our relationship looks like and is without having to compete or compare our relationship to anybody else's. The second thing that it does is that it opens up the door for these secret relationships or hookups on the side. So yes, that is a possibility that does happen. There are some secrets when it comes to social media and being able to openly flirt in somebody's DM or in somebody's inbox or even instant messaging them and your partner has no idea. So that is a challenge. But it really just depends on your partner. We kind of know who we chosen. And if you have a very flirtatious um, a person who even cheats, then this is absolutely a great avenue for them to be able to get away with a lot of things. The third thing is that it actually can create some insecurity in our partners. Now, what do I mean by that? So if you are not showing and showcasing the world, me as your new boo, then I might think that you are secretly trying to hide me from the world. Especially if I'm not asking questions or trying to understand the dynamics of the way that you actually think and why you're not showcasing me as your boo, new boo or not, just period. Why you're not showcasing me to the world, i.e. Facebook, i.e. Twitter, i.e. Instagram, Snapchat and all the other ones that I don't even know about. The fourth challenge that social media adds to our relationships is that the moments seem less genuine and more staged. So say for instance, I am out with my boo and we all looking good, smelling good. I'm not a picture person, neither is my boo, right? However, I want to put something on social media. So instead of me being in the moment, enjoying our time together, enjoying our daughter together, enjoying just the whole scenery depending on where we went, I'm like, hey, let's take a million in one picture so I can post all of these so everybody can see what a great life I have, what a great relationship I have. Oh my God, I have a good father. I mean, you know, a, a good... Dad to my father, uh, really I can't even say it, a good father to my daughter, etc. So we're showcasing and staging these moments and the genuineness of them is flying out the window. The fifth challenge that these social media sites add to our relationship is that it creates a false sense of reassurance. Because we're looking for the likes, we're looking for the shares, we're looking for the comments on how wonderful we look and oh my God, y'all such a pretty couple or y'all such a good looking couple, y'all look good together, ooh, I wish I was, and uh, that, that, right, creates a false reassurance of everything that's going on because we openly look for these likes, we openly look for these comments and, you okay? Studies have actually shown that when we do not get the likes, when we do not get the comments as much as we are looking for, it's okay. That's okay. As much as we are looking for, as much as we would like to have them, then we actually get lightweight depressed. I'm sorry, baby. I sorry. I the sixth thing that we are doing, sisters and brothers, is that we are comparing ourselves to these other couples, to the things that we actually see them post, the places that we see them post, where they're going, whether it's family, whether it's single, it doesn't matter. We are interested in comparing what we post versus what other people post. And on top of that, how many likes they get, how many comments they get, how many etc. We're com constantly comparing the things that we post specifically about our relationships on social media and it is actually causing these effects, these um, emotional effects where the depression and everything is, uh, is coming into play like, well, actually I meant psychological, but emotional as well. However, all of that stuff is coming into play and you're like, well, how come they got more likes than me or how come nobody else commented on my stuff? How come I only got one like? You know, it's just never enough. That It also creates that never enough. That's not, not on my list. However, that's actually a bonus tip that I'm throwing in right here. It also creates that never enough feeling because we constantly want more, 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 more. 
You know, 10 is not enough. 100 is not enough. You know what? Well, I got I got 150, but I really want 500. But then you get the 500. But you know what? I really would like 1,000. It creates that never enough. The satisfaction um, goes away significantly that quick. Number seven. Number seven is a big one. Number seven is feeling like you need to secretly check your spouse's, partner's, mate's phone. Of course, when they're not there, right? So when they go to the restroom, but they left their phone, so you're checking it. Or don't, God forbid, it, they left it open and they need to run outside to do something. That is like a haven for <laughs> disaster because sometimes nothing could be going on, but you as the receiver, you as the one taking this information in, takes things out of context. And I'm, I'm super guilty of taking things out of context. I think that it's something that I've seen, but it's not something that I've seen. I'm like, hey, what, what's this right here? What, what, what's this right here? <laughs> right? But I'm being honest. I'm, I'm flawed, too. I'm flawed, too. I'm human, too. And so some of my flaws still come out. I, it, it, relationship are, relationships are a constant work in progress. So nobody is perfect in a relationship. Even us as the relationship expert, even us as the relationship coaches, we still get caught up. We still have the flaws that are shown in our own relationships because all of us are human. But we still have these emotional feelings ourselves. So even though we're out here giving all this advice, right, Sometimes we sometimes we slip too. Sometimes we get caught up too because we're all emotional beings. We're all emotional creatures. However, I probably could reel it in a lot faster than somebody else because, of course, I know, right? But my feelings get involved. And when your feelings get involved, sometimes this up in here, that logical portion of us, we looking like that's for somebody else. <laughs> but it's for you. It's for me. It's for us. So we are all learning these things together. Of course, I know them, we're right? It's one thing to know, but as one of my slogans is, knowledge is power, but applied knowledge is better. You have to apply it to every situation. Okay? So we good. We working. We doing this thing together. We're learning and applying all of these things together. And they are not going to be worked and stopped overnight because it's something that's been ingrained in us over a period of years. And now, dang, I will be. Anyway, I'll be 41 this year. So you just have to think about all this stuff. Yes, I'm showcasing that I'm doing a whole lot better than I ever was, but I'm still a work in progress. She, she, she want to be on here. She want to be on here. So, uh, yeah, I got a few more and then we're going to wrap it up. But she wants to be on here. So bad. <laughs> okay, I'm back. So I thought I had a few more, but I actually only have one more. So I'm going to give that to you right now. I'm swinging her around. So the last one actually could be something that is detrimental to the relationship, especially if one party is not paying attention or if you both are actually doing this, which is... As soon as you get on social media, you are zoning out. So say, for instance, you and your boo. Yeah, I'm still swinging her. Anyway, you and your boo are supposed to be on a date, but y'all not even on a date because both of y'all are zoning out on y'all respective social media sites on y'all own phones. Y'all not enjoying the moment. You're not enjoying the time. Yeah, I'm getting some squats in too. Yes, honey, make me work. Anywho, uh, <laughs> I'm being silly right now, but... So, as usual, family, I really hope that these eight tips have absolutely helped you out. Definitely incorporate them into your relationship. That way, you can start seeing a big change in your relationship because social media can take all of us by surprise, per se. And it really can time. Social media can make you come out of your character if you allow it to. So, if you can minimize, minimalize your amount of time that you are spending on social media, then that will absolutely help you out as well. Well, now, if this is your very first time here, of course, hit the red subscribe button or the icon with my lovely face because here at I Love Me Me Me, I'm supplying you guys with all of the tips and tools in order to have happy, healthy, romantic relationships. Do not forget to check out the playlist. And of course, my online courses are down in the description box below. Check them out. You will not regret it. You will gain so much information, so much knowledge, and be able to apply to your relationship and see your relationship make a complete 180. Not 360 because you're going back into the same area that you were. So a complete 180. I will see you again tomorrow. Deuces.